A normal day in my life is to get up and take Tate to preschool, go for a run, come home, and work on my embroidery business for a couple hours and then go pick Tate up. And then usually we play for a little while or go do some fun activity in the afternoon. And then he has rest time for a little while. And then he gets up and I cook dinner for him and get him ready for bed and put him to bed. And then usually I work some more. I had taken Tate to school and I was sitting at my computer working on a birthday shirt for my nephew, a Batman shirt, and my big old machine had just finished the first step. And my mom called, and because the machine wasn't running, I answered the phone. And I started talking to her, and I was trimming the Batman out, and I don't remember really what happened after that. She said she heard muffled sounds, so she hung up the phone and called you and luckily you were in town in a meeting and you didn't pick up the first time so she hung up and tried again and when you saw that she'd called the second time you knew something must be wrong and you took you, you took the phone outside the meeting and called me and I have one missed call on my cell phone and then the second call is 12 minutes long and I know that you talked to me and told me to go get my coat and my shoes and I kept trying to convince you that everything was okay but I was really confused and somehow I got up off the floor by my machine and made it to the couch because I remember sitting on the couch with you on speakerphone and looking at the phone. And I had a little cut on my hand and I was really worried because the iron was on because I was working on my applique stuff. We went to the ER and it was so busy because the flu's been really bad here this year. So you dropped me off and they wheeled me in in the wheelchair and I was rattling off all my information, my name and my birthday and insurance stuff and it took you like a half an hour to park and they put me in a room and started running tests and then when you came in they took me for a CAT scan and then I remember the sweet beautiful doctor coming in after the CAT scan to tell me that they had found something on my brain and what was that like? I don't know I kind of felt relieved because it made me realize that the migraines I've been having the last year actually had a cause Were you ever scared? Mm -mm. Why do you think you weren't scared? Because I'm a rock star. <laughs> so what happened after, after all that? Well, I got really disoriented and I had a panic attack because I couldn't remember what had happened to Tate and I was worried about where he was at. They put me in the neuro ICU for two days yeah. and that was pretty terrible. Well, the seizure happened on a Monday and we went home on a Thursday and I didn't get to see Tate for three whole days and that was really rough. He sent a little note to the hospital and then I just had to sit at home and wait for surgery. And who did your surgery, do you remember? Dr. Chang Tao. Chang Tao. Uh-huh, and he's a rock star too because he got 98% of that awful thing out of my head. And I had a headache for the first two days and I thought, man, those migraines were rough last year. How did you feel after the surgery? What's it like to have brain surgery? It wasn't half bad, really. I thought it was going to be horrible, and I was really scared because I was so disoriented after the, surger, the uh, seizures that I was going to be disoriented after the surgery, too. But I remember waking up and them saying, Alicia, do you know where you're at? And I said, yes. And they said, how do you feel? And I said, I'm a rock star. And then I felt really bad because I thought that I was being kind of rude to them so I said you guys are rock stars too thank you for taking care of me and then I felt silly so I said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because I knew that they had done a good job and that everything was going to be okay so how many days were you in the hospital three they told me the bare minimum and I took that as a challenge they said one day in recovery one day in neuro ICU one day in a regular room and I said okay I got it and I told those nurses and those techs and the physical therapists, if they did their job, I would do mine. And what was it like finding out that the tumor wasn't a benign tumor? I don't know. I kind of expected that, too, because nothing should be growing in your head. Do you remember what it, what it felt like to hear Dr. Schreeder explaining that?
I think I still felt relieved because I knew that the migraines were caused by something. And do you remember what he originally said that your brain tumor was? Mm -hmm. A grade 3 astrocytoma. When I first woke up, my left side was a little weak, so I had to work on my left side. So I did a lot of like rubber band exercises, and my husband followed me around the house for several days saying, don't bump into the wall, because I didn't have peripheral vision at all, especially on the left. And I had to keep my head upright, so they went and bought me this swanky recliner to sleep in for like the first three nights, and that was a little tough because I just couldn't move around a lot and I was really physically restricted for the first couple weeks. I used to be so uptight before and I feel like that part of me is gone. I feel like my old self still. I was very left brain before which means I'm right handed and I'm very logical and the tumor was on the right side and they actually had to dig a good portion of the front part right here out. And it's funny because the MRI actually looks like a heart. And I think that's God's reminder that the good stuff's not stored in your brain. It's stored in your heart and in your soul. Well, I just believe that God can do anything. And I believe that I'm already taken care of. And that he had this whole recovery planned out before it even had to happen. And when I look back on the last year and even my whole life, I can see the signs pointing to the fact that this is because... Someone needs to hear the story. Being a mom is hard. Having a three-year-old is hard. Having a brain tumor, it's not normal yet, really, but it's not weird either. But it's gone anyway, 98% of it, and it's not going to come back. My future plans, I'm going to live until I'm 100, so you all are going to have to get to heaven and wait on me, okay? I feel like I've always been an optimistic person, but I've always been very careful about separating like my personal life and business life because I didn't want to impose on people. But I think God calls us to be an open book and calls us to share our stories with the world, and that's how people learn about Him and know about Him. So I feel like that is just like in my face all the time. What, would, what advice would you give to somebody that's just found out that they've got a brain tumor and they're facing what, what you're facing, knowing what you know now? It's going to be okay. It's a lot better than a lot of other types of cancer because they can focus the radiation and the chemo is not as invasive as it would be if you had something like breast cancer or pancreatic cancer or colon cancer or something like that. And our brains are pretty amazing. We're cooler than a starfish or a lizard. Like your brain rewires itself so incredibly fast, even without sleeping like you're supposed to. Talk about the steroids. The steroids wake me up, even through Ambien. So I probably sleep four hours a day. And then other than that, my mind is just going all the time. And I kind of have to like really try hard to focus myself. And the steroids make me shake too. So some things are kind of difficult because of that. And they said that the steroids may be making my eyes a little blurry because I've felt like my eyes are blurry, but they didn't mess with that part of my brain. The optical nerves and stuff. Don't eat red jello when you wake up from surgery. It'll make you sick to your stomach. Yeah. And beg for the ice chips because ice chips are the best food ever. And ice packs after surgery are the best. Be nice to your doctors and nurses because they work really hard. Get a recliner. Make somebody go get your recliner immediately because you will not be able to lay down. Soft fuzzy blankets and heating pads because it's so cold. It's winter time right now and I lost five pounds between the seizure and the surgery. You may have to label stuff for yourself while your brain rewires itself and try to do as much as you can on your own as soon as you start to feel good. But rest, even if you can't sleep, rest a lot. It's impossible to understand, but depending on what side of the brain it's on, <clears throat> excuse me, it could be really hard for them to communicate with you. I feel like my emotional side is just a lot more 
controlled by my logical side now, so I'm able to voice things very bluntly now. And I, I felt like I was being really rude the first several days. So I apologized a lot for myself. But you just have to know that their heart is still there. And give them the benefit of the doubt that their body will catch up, their brain will catch up. Trust God. He's got it figured out. Don't worry, everything's going to be okay. Anything else? Hashtag brain surgery. <laughs>